What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to part two of our pontoon aka party barge build. Now we've already done all the more difficult parts and the not so fun parts of tearing everything down and trying to get it prepped and ready to build up. Now it's time to start making things better and adding cool things to it. So that said, we are going to be starting working on the fencing. Uh, we did decide to go ahead and keep the current fencing and basically remodel, rehab what we have. Uh, the first thing that we have to do is we have to start taking out the paneling. So as you can see, the paneling is very dated looking. We don't want any of that. So we have ordered new paneling and a black finish. Uh, we have also decided to go ahead and paint the current railings in the, the fence part of the fence uh, in a gloss black. So we'll be doing that today. We'll be sanding that down, giving it a light uh, sand, a primer, a coat, and then a clear coat. So that's going to get ready there. Uh, then we're going to move on to some other cool stuff with the build. But let's go ahead and start by getting some of this uh, paneling out of here. All right, so our first step to getting this fence rehab is going to be taking off the actual doors or the gates so in order to get those off it's pretty straightforward uh, we just need to drill out the rivets here it'll pull these things right off once we get that off we do have a couple of the rivets here you'll see and a couple bolts to take out and then what we want to do is we want to slide this whole paneling straight out of here you can kind of see how it's left inside here we're going to slide that whole thing straight out of there and we're going to basically pitch that once that's done we are going to start getting ready for prep for paint so let's go ahead and start pulling those things out all right guys so this is pretty straightforward when you're taking your rivets out uh, keep in mind that we don't want to over drill the sides of the rivet so you want your drill bit to be larger than the size of the hole that you see here um, but you got to figure out what size rivet you have whether it be an eighth inch or a three sixteenths or whatever um, i have to be drilling it out with three sixteenths so you'll see when i drill here see how the head pops off like that now what happens is when I go to put this thing back on, that 3 8 will fit right back in there. I won't have to worry about it being too large and not holding tightly. So now that we've drilled all these out, we're just gonna go ahead and pull that gate, separate it off. It's pretty straightforward there. Uh, now we have access inside to, uh, to get some of this paneling out. So let's go ahead and pull that out. All right guys, so as far as the gate goes, I had uh, eighth inch uh, rivets going up through here. I went ahead and drilled out both sides. So now it's basically time to pull this out Keep in mind, it may not come out very easy just because uh, it's probably somewhat corroded. It's been in there since 1989. Uh, so that said, it's probably not going to be the easiest thing to get out, but we're also not keeping it either. So um, you're probably going to have to fight with it just a little bit, but you'll be able to see here. Be careful you don't cut yourself um, because it probably won't just slide back unless we get a flathead screwdriver here and kind of pry it out just a hair, which we might have to do. Um, again, just to be safe, we don't want to cut yourself because this stuff can get pretty sharp. So I also suggest wearing gloves like I am not. Um, that said, let me go ahead and rip this thing out. I'll be right back. All right, guys, it's uh, it's definitely a little bit of tight, uh, tighter than I was expecting. Um, I went ahead and kind of gave it a little bit of foot action from the front. Uh, just light tap and it broke it loose. Uh, but that top line there was definitely tight inside. So uh, you can see I pried it out just a little bit with a screwdriver. Uh, once we get the new stuff all back together, that'll probably get closed back up. Uh, but here is our fence nonetheless. Uh, ready to be cleaned up. So let's go ahead and get the rest of this stuff out. All right, so real quick, guys, I did notice that kicking it out is a lot easier than trying to pry it out. So uh, just what I'm doing, you can kind of see here, is just getting a little light kick from behind. It's coming right out. Uh, again, just be careful you don't cut yourself while you're doing it. Uh, but I think that's going to be the fastest, easiest way to get it out. All right, guys, so there is all our fencing, uh, as you can see. Uh, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to hit it with a just a sanding sponge. To get all the loose grime off it before we hit it with a primer coat. Um, now, I'm not anticipating this looking like a car paint job. Uh, it'll look good. We're going to use actual car paint uh, for the clear coat, which will it'll seal it in really well. But, you know, it's not going to be perfectly smooth. There will probably be some grime in it, especially considering I'm, I'm out in the middle of a field doing this. So it's not going to be perfect. But it's going to look good uh, nonetheless. So what I'm going to do right now, again, is I'm going to sand this thing to get any loose grime off it. Uh, and then I'm going to set them up on buckets so I can get ready to spray. So let me show you what that looks like. All right, guys, so here you can see everything's basically set up. I uh, went ahead and put some, uh, some pipe down into the ground to hold the, uh, the, uh, the doors over there up, or the gates up. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be spraying the etching, self-etching primer coat, uh, which is this right here. And yes, it is an army green color. Uh, you might ask, why don't I use black if I'm going to make it black? Uh, the reason why is I like to have a separation in color. So once I'm at, let's say, a, a flat green, I'll know that I have good coverage with the base coat black when there's uh, a good level of black over top of everything. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to spray this right now. Let me show you what it looks like when it's all said and done. 
All right, guys, so there you can see the self-etching primer is on. I uh, did a fairly light coat, but it's well covered, so that's all we really needed. Uh, I'm going to be up front and tell you guys, this is not the cheapest part of your build. So if you guys are doing this, you're going to see that the cost of just the spray paint alone is going to start to build up. I mean, we've probably got $400 in paint. Now, right now, what we're going to be shooting for uh, is we're using a Rust-Oleum. Uh, actually, it's actually a primer and uh, base all-in-one. It's a satin black and some of you might be saying well why are you doing a satin black if you're doing gloss well here's my experience um gloss paints seem to be thinner uh, i don't know if they are thinner but when you spray them if, if anybody's ever used spray paint before you know that the base or a flat coat compared to a gloss coat the flat is much thicker and covers so much better and because we're going to be doing clear it's not really necessary for me to use that so that is the reason that i am using a flat um, also, uh, for part three, which we'll be doing clear coat, that's going to be optional for you guys too. Um, but you, this is going to be the most important part right here, this base. Uh, we want to make sure we get a good even coat. And again, like I said, I like having a different color base than my primer coat. And the reason why is I can see that the actual paint has been covered properly. So let me go ahead and let me spray this base on. Let me show you what it looks like and we'll move forward. All right, guys, so I'm shooting the base right now. I wanted to show you kind of how I do it. Uh, not that this is a painting lesson or anything, and I'm no painting expert. I'm just showing you what works for me. Uh, and one of the things that I really wanted to show you, I wanted to showcase kind of the difference again between the primer coat and the base coat. So if you'll see as I cover this thing, see how the difference is of how you can tell what's been painted and what's not been painted. Um, very important thing to do. So anyways, I just wanted to show you that. Uh, let me get back with you when this is all finished. All right, guys, there's your base coat. It is a satin black Rust-Oleum. Uh, it turned out actually really, really nice. Uh, I really like the satin, and had I known that, I probably would have bought a satin clear rather than a high gloss uh, glamour clear, but it is what it is. Um, overall, really no hiccups. It was just easy spraying, and I, I definitely, if you guys haven't had one of these, you guys have to buy one of these things. This Rust-Oleum 7899, that's probably not the part number anymore. This is probably like 20 years old. I forgot I had it. But man, if you don't have one of these things to help you spray, you are going to hate yourself how bad your hands and wrists hurt when this is all done. So I suggest on buying one of those the month you're going to be spraying. Speaking of spraying, uh, I have used five cans of Black Base. I used four cans of the uh, Etching Primer. And now we're on to the clear. Now I want to state something, guys. This is not necessary for you guys to do. You guys do not have to clear coat this. I repeat, you do not have to. It is expensive. It is twenty to twenty-five dollars per can, um, and like I said, it's just—it's really not cheap. Now, the only downside is if you don't, you know, anytime somebody handles your railings and stuff, any areas, especially the gates, they're going to end up starting to chip this off, especially if they wear rings or anything like that. Now, you'd like to think people on a boat probably wouldn't have good jewelry on, but nonetheless, it's probably going to get ruined if you don't clear coat it with the real clear. That said, some of you are going to be like, "Well, I have to clear. I don't want it to chip." and now this and that so you don't have to uh, but you can do a smarter way of clear coating so for me I'm only gonna be clear coating the fascia of it very outside and the tops well all the way around the top rail so that basically leaves the whole insides to not be cleared because reality is I didn't have to paint that because my paneling will be going over top of that but uh, I just did just because I wanted to what if I decided I didn't want paneling which I don't think is the case you'll see when we get the paneling in um, and we start putting it on. However, I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, other than that, everything went pretty smooth. Uh, a couple of insects that tried to walk in the paint. Uh, real talk, I don't understand it. Like, what, what, what goes through an insect's head when, you know, hey, let's walk through this paint. I'm, you know, I'm in this at this point. I'm, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do this. This makes sense. I don't get that. It's like, you see people in parking lots and they walk through the, the fresh seal coat when they have it seal coated. Some of them barefaced. I've seen it before. What goes through a person or an insect's mind that says, hey, this is the right thing to do. I'm committed. I should keep doing this. Nonetheless, uh, everything else went, I guess, pretty smooth. Um, so right now, like I said, I'm going to put on my clear. The clear that I am using, again, as I always do, comes from Sean Williams. Uh, I'm using spray paint, guys, FYI, just because it's a narrow spray. Because I don't need to be spraying a wide fan. So this stuff works fantastic. This is the clear glamour. Now, you can use, again, they have a satin base and... A couple different ones if you like the satin like you see right here get the satin and you only have to hit it where people are going to touch you know like the top of the railing stuff like that so i'm kind of forced to do wherever it's going to kind of match so it's on me but overall i'm really happy with the progress so i think this is going to turn out fantastic so anyway stick around let me get this clear on and let me show you what it looks like 
All right, guys, so there it is all finished. There is our gloss coat on it. Uh, I only ended up using two cans of gloss, and again, I was trying to be smart uh, and spray smart, um, so I went ahead and made sure there was enough coats on all around the top railings, especially on the gates where you know their hands are gonna be, uh, and then all along the face of it. I didn't do anything really on the very inside of it from the second layer down, because again, that's all covered by paneling. You're not gonna see any of that, so everything else has got coated. And it's just a light coat. Anything that I had extra, I put along the main handled areas where I'd worry about scratching. Uh, and then in a back corner because there will be a grill built in back there. Uh, you'll see how that happens or how that lays out here shortly. Um, but this is it. So hope you guys appreciate the way it turned out and that you guys like it. Uh, it's definitely a viable option compared to buying a new fence. Not the cheapest option. Again, you guys have many cheaper options. You can go to Walmart and buy their paint if you want to. Don't expect it to last. However, if you're coming for... Something cheap, just a cheap project to get it looking a little bit better, you can do so. So like I said, I wanted to spend a little bit extra to make sure that this came out and turned out nice, uh, and I think it did. So let's go ahead and move forward. All right, so the next step is getting this motor cleaned up and looking a little bit more presentable. Now, I don't know how it runs. I was told it runs well, so I'm kind of crossing my fingers on this one, but I do want to get it at least cleaned up and get a fresh coat of paint on that to make it look a little bit better. Um, so we're gonna start by taking off all the decals on the top and on the bottom, giving it a light sand and prep to get it ready to get some paint on. So let's go ahead and do that. Now the decals have been sitting in the sun all day, so I'm hoping that it's been warm enough to peel it off, kind of like using a heat gun. Let's go ahead and try this. When you do this, you wanna make sure you do it real slow. The slower you do it, the less residue is gonna be left behind and less headache you're gonna have, presumably. Though I can already see the zero separating itself, so don't talk too soon, right? Uh, let me go ahead and see how well I can get this thing off with a heat gun if I have to. All right, guys, so I managed to sand it down, get most of the stickers off. Uh, what I did realize, and I kind of figure anyways, is this, this cap here is a mix of like fiberglass and plastic. Uh, and it's not real fun to try to get stickers off. And uh, well, what basically ended up working for me was um, basically getting a flat razor blade and getting underneath the paint and taking the paint off. As you can see, this is paint right here. This is not. Um, that's really the only that was coming off. Now, again, what works for me may not work for you and vice versa, uh, but heat guns and uh, rubber wheels and everything else wouldn't take none of this off. So uh, it's kind of frustrating, um, especially when I was only really wanting to paint the bottom, but I thought new decals would make it look a lot better. So I'm gonna try to my best to make this thing look better than it does. Um, so stick with me here. I'm gonna start priming and painting. All right, so there is the base coat, guys. Uh, it looks a thousand percent better than it did, uh, even being spray painted. Now again, it's spray paint, so you don't really know how long it's gonna hold up. Uh, I only took one can, so at the end of the day, uh, it's the $5 investment, but I still am considering putting clear coat over top of it because it really gives it that fresh, new popping look. Uh, the only downside to it, uh, there's a little bit of wear in the fiberglass here, you can kind of see. Uh, it's not perfect. Um, don't plan on it being for being a late 80s model. Uh, but overall, it looks pretty good. And obviously, we still have to change that prop. But we're going to get into that when we start doing the actual motor work on side of things. Um, so let's go ahead and let's move forward. Okay, and there you guys have it. Fully glossed and redone. Uh, actually looks really good. Uh, you'll also notice, too, our uh, two-stroke oil viewing window is super clear now and looks much better than it did, even though it's got a little bit of cracking right there. Uh, just like you guys have seen us do in videos for headlight restoration before, uh, that clear coat, man, it's wonder, it does wonders. It's just amazing the stuff that it can repair and fix. So, like I said, turned out really, really nice uh, for 1989. It's pretty impressive. So let's go ahead and uh, let's move forward and continue on working. All right, one more step into making this thing look better. Three, two, one, and there you have it. And if you look down here, I added my own little touch. <laughs> Gotta love them. Anyhow, let's move forward. All right guys, so here's our roll of fence paneling. So to continue on, we need to cut it to size to fit the, uh, the actual fence itself. Uh, in my situation, because this is not long enough or tall enough to do the top to bottom, which I would prefer, it's like a half inch short, which you need to have to be able to bolt it on there to have it stiff. So we're just gonna go from the, the middle down like it was originally, um, which is actually 16 inches, uh, which you probably can't see here, but I have it marked every like, three feet at 16 inches and we're going to use a square to go ahead and mark this with a uh, the sharpie and then we're going to use this thing right here to cut it so let me get that cut and show you what it looks like all right so i just want to show you guys how easy it is to cut with this uh so all you're going to do you can you can see your, the line that i've made here you're going to put it on the inside lip uh for that because what it's going to do is it's going to cut out of this little thin strip right here this little 
quarter inch strips. So uh, it's a lot simpler than it looks. Uh, it's simply just hitting a bun. As you can kind of see, running straight up the line, it cuts it right out like butter. Uh, really, really simple. Uh, so again, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut all the way down. Uh, we're gonna get ready to go ahead and uh, rivet this thing on. All right guys, so here we have it sitting on top of the actual rail itself. Uh, and normally what we'd be doing, uh, and I'm gonna try first, is this, uh, this railing actually slides up inside this groove here. Uh, so what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to take the screwdriver and widen that out all the way down. Uh, it's really tight, it was really hard to get out to, as you saw, I had to kick it out, it wouldn't come out. Um, so I'm gonna attempt to put it in this way first. If it doesn't work, uh, we're gonna end up basically riveting it down right to it, uh, over top of it. Uh, and again, you'll see if we do have to do that, uh, you're going to want to make sure to start from one corner and work your top all the way down before you do the bottom, uh, just to make sure you don't get it skewed or off angle. Um, so let me go ahead and see if I can widen this thing out, see if it slides in it. If not, we're going to have to go the other route. All right, guys, so putting it back inside those rails does not work. Uh, I tried, even after spreading those things open, it would not go through. I got it about four feet, almost five, and it just stopped. Um, and apparently this stuff you can see scratches really easy um, I had a little bit of a screw hole like right here and just that little bit scratched the crap out of it um, So I'm gonna say that it's probably not a good idea to try to stuff that back into the rails uh, You can like I said see kind of the wear Fortunately, I was able to flip this thing inside out and all the furniture should cover it right here So I'm not that concerned about it but like I said, I am gonna put these rivets in right now. You can see where the first one is and we're gonna run, we're basically gonna run this top edge, keeping it nice and tight, uh, straight all the way down and then we'll come all the way back down. So let me go ahead and put those in, show you what it looks like. All right guys, so there is the first one done. As you can see, all riveted on, all fairly tight. The uh, edges of the metal are fairly smooth. There's nothing sharp to worry about cutting anybody. Um, the backside looks fantastic. Obviously I had no, uh, no scrapes, no scratches, looks really good. So it turned out really, really nice. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's move forward. Let's get some of these other ones done. So there they are, guys. The uh, railings are now all done with the fencing, as you might call it. Uh, all I gotta do is get them installed, but I think the next step from here on out is gonna getting the floor down. Uh, so let's go ahead and start looking at this floor and see what we can do to get this thing finished up. All right, so it's time to start the uh, flooring. And uh, as you can see, this is the flooring that we have chose. It is a foam type flooring, much like hydro turf. Uh, we chose, this is actually our second choice. Our first choice was a marine vinyl. It was a, uh, a rustic teak looking wood. It was like an off-white uh, rough with kind of a graze in it. Um, we chose not to go with that uh, for a couple different reasons. To start, uh, there's another YouTuber that is doing a pontoon rebuild. I think he's actually on his second. His name is Ultimate Rebuilds. Uh, if you haven't seen his channel, you should definitely check it out. He's got pretty good content. He's a pretty cool kid. So go ahead and check that out. But he, uh, he actually attempted to install one of their floors from the discount flooring, summer marine flooring, something like that. The flooring for the 28 foot, or actually this is, a. Uh, 24 foot deck uh, was roughly like 800 bucks uh, but they changed their business name and upped it to like 18 or 1900 dollars to a new style uh, which made me kind of uh, weary as far as the product uh, ultimate rebuilds the one he put down he put two different kinds down and said that he didn't like that one as much uh, so ultimately we chose to go this route we also chose this route because we got a way for just under 500 bucks for this whole deck to be done so uh, keep that in mind too we're trying to get you the best bang for your buck uh, so really so far happy with this anyhow moving forward to get this thing on uh, is just like any other hydro turf uh, it is self-adhesive however most every jet ski i've ever done has never had an aluminum floor like this uh, so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna add some extra of the weldwood contact cement the dap um, this is typically what you use you use a roller to to roll it on uh, with jet skis uh, again jet skis are oftentimes very similar uh, they usually don't come perfectly clean but it seems to hold really well i did notice uh, usually in the heat like in direct sunlight um, sometimes you'll get bubbles so you have to keep pushing it down to make sure it doesn't lift up um, so that could be a potential issue but what we're going to do is we're going to put down the first layer here uh, and see how it goes from there. Now I will tell you the only downside to using this particular flooring here is typically boats have the lines going this way. Um, we have to go this way just because it's obviously a lot long enough. Now these things were supposed to be like, I don't know, just shy of nine feet. It's about a half inch uh, on each side short, which is okay because our caps kind of go over top of this. Um, but because of that, we couldn't do it lengthwise. 
Uh, and they're also supposed to be like 47 half inches wide. They're actually only 45. Uh, the other downside to that is when they cut these, if you'll see how the white is on this end and you look all the way to that end, kind of disappears, they're not cut straight. So unfortunately, like this roll, we'll cut all the way up to the gray. And then when we put our next roll on, we'll cut off another one at the white. So the white will butt up to it and it'll give a, a nice even uh, fluid look. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna start by marking the very centers of this and the center of the deck. So basically with the Sharpie, so, uh, so I can make sure that I'm lined up. Once I'm lined up, I'm gonna basically fold this over in half, glue down one half, stick it, let it dry, and then glue down the other half, stick it, let it dry. And once we know that that one's good, we're gonna run these the rest of the way back. So let's go ahead and move forward and get that done. All right guys, so as you can see, I put my mark in the middle of the deck. Uh, then I have my mark in the middle of the foam here. And what I'm gonna do again is I'm gonna line these up. You can see I have it folded over in half right now with a brick holding it down. I'm gonna take the dab cement and I'm gonna use a roller. I'm gonna roll this whole section out. We're gonna do our best in hopes that this front of this is square. We're gonna run off the, the front of it, assuming that it's square, uh, to try to keep it straight all the way down. So uh, let's get the first half down and see what it looks like. All right guys, so the first one's on. Uh, just as a note, we just learned the hard way. Uh, just as you know that they didn't cut the, the long sides, uh, square or straight, well, neither were the sides. So we went off uh, what we hope to be perfectly straight, which probably is in the front of the pontoon. Uh, you can kind of see where that got us over here, as well as the shortness over here. Now, fortunately, uh, the outer edges cover that, so I'm not too concerned about that. However, uh, you might want to double check and triple check to make sure everything's fitted the way you want it. Uh, it's windy here right now, it's a little bit tough for us, but um, fortunately it's going to cover and we ought to be able to be straight enough to get all the way down the row here, so let's try the second one. All right guys, continuing on, we want to do a center mark again, both here and on the back of the, uh, the back of the paper. And again, what you're gonna do is a light cut down the center of this thing, uh, so you can peel off and do half at a time. When it's all said and done, as you're doing section by section, you wanna make sure you use a roller just like this to roll out any air bubbles that you might find. So let's go ahead and get the second one on. All right guys, so here is three layers down so far, or three sections. Uh, one thing to notice, and I didn't think you'd be able to see it on camera, but at least on my screen you kinda can, uh, I guess one of the complaints about these things was the color consistency. Uh, and if you look right about there where it starts, you can see that has a little bit lighter. Not really a big deal. Most people that get on board aren't going to see any of that stuff. Um, but it still is noticeable. But keep in mind, again, for under 500 bucks, this is an absolute killer deal. Uh, if you just think in terms of HydroTurf and buying sheets for PWCs, I mean, these things... You know you're talking 200 bucks for a sheet so it's really a pretty good value but speaking of pwc parts uh today's episode is sponsored by jet motorsports midwest uh suppliers of quality used parts at affordable prices if you guys need uh used parts for jet skis for motorcycles whatever these guys are fantastic great customer service and tons of parts so go ahead and check them out i'll put a link in the description to below uh, that said, we got about another two to three sheets to put on. We're in and out with the rain, uh, trying to uh, kind of skip over on it. Um, so hopefully it's done and we'll get dry and we'll get the uh, basically the fourth, fifth, and sixth sheet down. So let's go ahead and move forward. All right, guys. So there is the entire floor finished. Uh, I think it turned out really nice. Uh, after sitting this on for a little bit, a lot of the separation in color really is it's hard to distinguish the difference. So uh, I'm actually really happy with it. Um, it's got a great feel. It's got a slight sponginess to it but it's still also really stiff if you guys know hydroturf it's pretty much identical to it uh really feels very nice uh like i said for under 500 bucks i think this is absolutely the best bang for the buck that you can get um anyways it's time to move forward let's continue this build let's keep going right now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put all our railings along the outsides here or our edges or borders whatever you want to call it basically those things there uh, those all got to go on it before we can get the railings on let's go ahead and move forward all right guys, so it's time to install the side trim. Uh, really simple, you guys don't need to know much about this other than uh, make sure you line up your very first hole, which is that right there, with this right here. Uh, then everyone should line up all the way down. Uh, and we are gonna go ahead and do all the way around the boat. So let me show you what it looks like when it's all done. All right, so all our trim's on now. Uh, we're getting ready to put on the actual fencing itself. You can see we have it sitting up here. Uh, it's really simple. We just got three eighth inch bolts, or screws actually, that screw through here, and some back brace. All right guys, so the railing and fencing is all on now. Let's go inside and check it out real quick. 
So I think it turned out fantastic. Um, we made a couple changes. I'll show you what those are. Uh, one of the changes that we made was we put these brackets on the inside, on the front, and the reason why is we got something special going right there. Now, that part might be cut right there for access, but I got really good plans that probably won't be on this actual build page, but it will end eventually going on this build. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, but tons of room back here. We got everything bolted up. Only thing we have left to do is fix the rivets right here. Somehow or another it was twisted. Uh, just FYI, I, I don't know how. Maybe it was, wasn't laying flat on the ground when we originally riveted it. Uh, so we went ahead and it popped out a couple rivets. You can see this thing has to be moved over, which is no big deal. Um, so we're getting there. The build is coming along like we wanted it to. Um, that said, that is a wrap for this video. Uh, stick it around, guys. Definitely stay tuned. If you're not subscribed already, definitely subscribe. we got a lot of cool stuff coming for this build. Again, we call it the Luxury Party Barge. There's a ton of stuff for us to do. Furniture to make. Specialty items going on top of it. You just you got to stick around and check it out. Anyhow, if you guys like this video, if you found it helpful, please throw a thumbs up. Uh, until then, we'll see you on the next one.